These rules are a combination of advice that I'd give ENFPs, but also things that you can learn from them, i.e. rules that ENFPs would advocate and benefit from. So it's a mixture of both. Number one, ideas are cheap and innovation is boring. Ideas are little dopamine hit eliciting wonders, addictive but fleeting highs, small injections of energy that stand in contrast to the more mundane aspects of life. Their appeal masks their inherent cheapness though, especially when compared with the toughness required to face the drudgery of execution and implementation of those ideas. Innovation is boring. It's about contending with the day-to-day -day problems and realities. It's about making actual, tangible change. If things feel too fun and too exciting, then be wary. If you're not bored when innovating, you're probably doing it wrong. Number two, for ENFPs, being normal is weird, so own it. There's no way around it. Uninhibitedly authentic ENFPs are going to stand out in any lineup of weird and wonderful characters. If you suppress yourself, yes, you will fit in better, but why pay such a high price for such a small reward? It's not worth it. Number three, people accept structured absurdity. Hey diddle diddle, the cat and the fiddle, the cow jumped over the moon, the little dog laughed to see such craft, and the fork ran away with the spoon. When you think of a nursery rhyme, you will often be struck by how ridiculous the premise or storyline is. Yet we accept it because it rhymes. Our brains recognize the structure, the pattern underlying it. It gives us a sense of comfort and predictability. That, in turn, opens the door to take people down a truly absurd and magical path if you want to. This has been the tactic employed by many famous creative ENFPs. They give people just enough to still feel comfortable with the new and the unknown. Since ENFPs are often creative people, it's a very useful approach to make use of. If you're going to be weird, wacky, and absurd, then make sure to give people enough structure to latch on to. Number four, be a well-fed artist. Financial stability and conventional ways of making money are not in opposition to pursuing your passions, living in line with your values, and being, in whatever form it takes, an artist. In fact, it's the perfect complement to those things. This is not a dilemma that will be lost on many ENFPs. It is important to not give any credence to this notion of the starving artist. Be well fed, either through a job that enables your creative pursuits or through those pursuits themselves. Number five, trust your own logic. ENFPs are often cast as not being logical, which is silly on many levels. Firstly, everyone is logical, regardless of their type. It's just a life skill. Secondly, ENFPs very much value the function of extroverted thinking. It is something that they value implicitly and make use of all the time. TE is a highly logical function, every bit as much as TI, just in different ways. When ENFPs are in organization mode, they can actually resemble ESTJs in their level of efficiency, effectiveness, and productivity. TE is very much a problem solving function, especially when trying to get stuff done. Also, both of the intuitive functions are logical, or at the very least, intellectual in nature. An intuitive function can arrive at the same kinds of insights as the thinking functions. So there is a lot of overlap between them. ENFPs have FI as their second slot function. As a result, their personal values and the personal values of others will be a big factor for them when making decisions. This way of being does not make a person or a type less rational in their approach to life. It simply denotes the preferences they might have in certain situations and their willingness to orient themselves towards those preferences. So this idea of ENFPs not being logical is, well, illogical. Number six, manage your energy and excitement. When it comes to struggling with things like follow-through, long-term commitment, and consistency, the issue is not that you don't have grit or determination. It's often because of over-enthusiasm at the beginning. ENFPs, when they are energized and motivated, can sometimes overestimate how much they are capable of and how much is possible. So they take on loads of projects, feeling like their current state of energy is going to persist. Then as time goes on, they realize that they've made a mistake and become overwhelmed with the sheer workload of what they've taken on. So for ENFPs, my advice would be to actually hold yourself back when you're feeling energetic, inspired, enthusiastic, and motivated. If you can manage your energy in those peak moments, then you're not going to feel overwhelmed at times when you're less motivated. Number seven, life hack the small stuff. The bottom two functions of ENFPs are TE and SI. I associate both of those functions with being excellent at running and maintaining things. ENFPs can dip into that mode of being when they need to, even though it isn't their main preference. So since they have a partial strength with these things, it makes sense for them to invest effort into developing systems, procedures, and even creative life hacks for some of the more day-to-day -day and mundane stuff in life.
sometimes those things are going to be okay to do, enjoyable even, but lots of the time it will also be pretty boring, so it's important to fly through it all as efficiently as possible. Number 8. Figure out your ambiversion levels. For the vast majority of the types, it's pretty straightforward for them to know how much socialising they can handle before feeling drained, and that typically correlates with whether they are extroverted or introverted. However, social extroversion isn't always correlated with being an extroverted type, and ENFPs are an example of where the line blurs a great deal. If ENFPs aren't aware of how much social interaction they can tolerate, then there is a risk of them getting into cycles of going overboard and then needing to lay in a darkened room for a week to recover. It's like bouncing between extremes. So ENFPs need to calibrate their life in such a way to accommodate their level of ambiversion. Number nine, accept everyone, but don't keep everyone. When you are open-minded, non-judgmental and egalitarian, as ENFPs are, you're going to be a magnet for all kinds of people, across all kinds of spectrums. This is a strength, and one that should never be let go of. Certain people, on the other hand, namely people who are a source of negativity, contentiousness and pain, should be let go of. If you want to be someone who is there for the people in your life, then starting with self-preservation is by far the best move. Number 10. Not everyone is an optimist. And that's okay. Some people are naturally wired to be pessimistic and cynical. If you present an idea to them, their most instinctive reaction will be to criticise and tear things apart. Some people are truly just wired this way. They are as pessimistic as you are optimistic. Once you identify these people in your life, there's two things that you can do. The first is to not take the things they say personally, always. The second is to make use of them. They are the kinds of people who are great for brainstorming ways to avoid negative outcomes and to protect your downside. Number 11. Slow down when communicating something complex. ENFPs and ENTPs naturally and instantly see possibilities that others either don't see or take a really long time to see. As a result, when they are explaining an idea or a plan to someone else, that other person might struggle to keep up with them. That, in turn, can be frustrating for ENFPs, who feel like they're not getting their point across. So realise that because you have fast minds, sometimes you need to give it to people nice and slow. Number 12. Don't try to live in a linear way. Society tends to frame the average life progression as being very linear and straightforward. There are certain milestones that we all have to reach at certain points. That is typically not a good way for ENFPs to live. Instead of expecting things to come to them in easy, straightforward ways, ENFPs need to embrace trial and error, iteration and experimentation. Sometimes you'll make the most life-changing discoveries in the most unexpected of places. Feel free to check out the links below in the description of the video, including the Love Who Discord server, which I would highly recommend joining. Also feel free to check out the Love Who website if you would like to be typed.